What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into Carnage issue number 10. Carnage has been let loose. Rejected by its former host Cletus Cassidy, the Carnage symbiote is on its own. But it has found a disciple in the serial killer named Kenneth Neely. And then there is Detective John Shade, being aided by the voice of Cletus Cassidy in his head, following in an encounter with the symbiote. He has tracked down Carnage across the universe, determined to stop them once and for all. But now Carnage, he has traveled to the Forge, armed with a codex. He plans to create a godly weapon of his own. Now make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we pick up with this issue, we are picking up with Drorin Runehewer. He is the dwarf that is currently forging the weapon for Carnage. And the blueprint that he was given, the Codex is unlike anything he has worked on ever before. A challenge and a thrill that he had forgotten that he could ever feel. But still, he keeps to himself. He knows what he must do. Because this weapon must never be made. He must kill Carnage to stop all of this. And Runehewer is trying to get Neely to side with him. At this point, Neely is recognizing that Carnage is just uncontrollable. At this point, he is recognizing that Carnage will not make Neely his host. And so because of this, they are plotting together to stop Carnage before this weapon is created and he brings the end of everything. What is unique about this weapon being forged is that they are going to use the falling stars to be able to fuel it, to be able to forge it. With about a hundred of these stars falling close enough, they can redirect them into the forge. This kind of energy, there is only one metal in the whole universe, in all of existence, that can absorb this kind of energy. That of course is Yuru Metal. Most of the weapons that they have made at this forge are made with Yuru Metal. And once those stars come falling from the sky, that is when they will use the little teleportation box and they will leave this place for wherever else they would like to be. If it doesn't work, then it will not matter. Because it doesn't matter how far they would run, nowhere would ever be far enough. That is where we pick up with Detective John Shade. He is recognizing that he's probably gone too far. The things that he has done in the sake of stopping Carnage and this serial killer. And Cletus tries to let him know that he has looked past the veil. He knows what's out there. Symbiotes, space, spiderlings, elves, giants. He has seen it all. He is colored so far past the lines that he's discovered art and meaning and inspiration. That you have gone so far, can you really put yourself back into that little box that you once lived in? We are seeing that Jonathan Shade is on the verge of breaking, but taking us back into the forge, Carnage is becoming impatient. He is waiting for his weapon, Runehewer letting him know that it takes time. That time is the key to forging a good weapon. That if you strike too early, it could ruin it all. Too late, and it could be a disaster. As the stars begin to fall, we see them begin to come into the forge, and all of this energy, it lands directly on Carnage. As Carnage screams in agonizing pain, asking what they are doing. All of this power is encapsulating him into a little bubble. Runehewer saying that you should have left me to rot in that prison. Runehewer had denied the gods themselves. And so lowering this forge to some base pursuit of violence. That is something that he could never tolerate. Letting him know that there is nothing in all of existence that could break him free of this. That could absorb the amount of energy that is coursing through him right now. And the only metal that could absorb it. There hasn't been any in this forge in a very long time. 
But this is where we have the arrival of John Shade. Asking where Carnage is. Neely says that you can stop now. That we have stopped Carnage. It is all over with. When he says that they are killing Carnage, John Shade freaks out just a little bit. We see John and his Carnage. They reach out, touching the symbiote. We see a giant surge of power. Whether it was Carnage's flesh tethered to Shade's body working with a mind of its own, or Shade himself wrapped up by the presence, they cannot tell. But just for a moment, they had carnage. They thought they had done the impossible. But that is when everything went wrong. Complacent in a moment of victory, the dwarf had given carnage everything that he needed. Knowledge. So confidently, he claimed that there was no more metal left in this forge. But he was mistaken. Like a stream of blood, carnage washed over the long dead corpses of dwarves still left in the forge. Their body, lungs, bones, fingernails, all still carrying traces of the metal that he needs. The metal now absorbing the energy, eating away at carnage, healing it, reforging it. And with each corpse scavenge, carnage grew in strength from a stream to a river to a sea of blood. Until in the end, there was only carnage. And now he wields his weapon, the weapon that he calls All Blood. Carnage going after the dwarf first, driving that weapon right through Runehewer, and then turning to John Shade. John Shade now dying without the part that was Cletus, without the part that was the symbiote. Carnage doesn't want to be ungrateful for everything that John Shade has done, because in this situation, John Shade is the savior. And so the gift, John Shade, is the new host of Carnage. And then there is Kenneth Neely. Kenneth Neely about ready to be taken out, that is when he sees the little box, the teleportation box that is now charged up. He grabs hold of it, not sure where to go in the universe, not sure what to do. He uses it to take him to the one person that might be able to stop Carnage. He teleports to Cletus Cassidy. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Definitely been a fun issue. I have been very excited with everything going on in Carnage, which is no surprise because this is written by the amazing Ram V. But now Carnage has his weapon, what he calls the All Blood. He has his God Slayer. And now, it is time to break the gods. Not sure how Cletus Cassidy could put it into this. Neely ran to him in hopes that this may be able to stop him. The dwarf dead and John Shade, now the host to the Carnage symbiote. One thing is for certain, Carnage is about to rain down. So let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with Carnage, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon having five different tiers. From $1 to $50 from loyalty badges to getting free comics every single month. Not only does this help out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you are unable to do any of that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.